Vinyl community, I'm back to do recent vinyl finds. <clears throat> it's been a while, about two weeks, I think, since I did a, a vinyl finds and the video, and I have a lot of stuff that I've been listening to and a lot of stuff that I just clean. But I'm gonna keep this kind of short, so I, I just pulled some of them uh, now to show you. So, I mean, here we go. First of all, <clears throat> I got a new turntable. It's the uh, Clear Audio Concept turntable, a German built. Uh, I mean, semi-high-end time turntable. I'm really, really pleased with it. And thank you so much, Anders and Roger, who also have the, that turntable. And I talked a lot with them uh, after reading about uh, about it and deciding on it. So uh, really, really happy with it. Thanks so much, guys. Today is brought to you by Red Wine. I mean, yeah. Cheers. The, the ladies uh, out with the work on, um, I mean, for, for food. So I ate three steaks by myself and I'm having red wine listening to music. Don't get better than that. And I have my, my uh, greasy hair on, so the trusty old uh, head, headband is on. And my, my one week uh, working beard. So you have to live with that, sorry. So, first of all, some records that I won't keep. Uh, I bought this for three bucks uh, because I thought the, the cover looked pretty interesting, Spike Island. I mean, late 60s, early 70s, something kind of record with some, some pretty <laughs> far up guys. And I thought that maybe this is a 60s pop record or maybe it's a um, psych rock record or something like that. I had no idea. I couldn't listen to it in the store. So, so I just grabbed it. Three bucks, hey. But this is shite all the way through. It's like uh, country rock with that dance band, Swedish dance band kind of thing uh, to it. Not worth three bucks, three bucks even. Won't go in the collection. Also bought uh, Grimlings uh, from 1990. This is a Swedish super group with Pug, Rogefelt, Pug here. And there's Göran Lagerberg from Tages and Egba and a lot of other bands. And Mikkel Ikfors and some others. But those two. And I mean, this is a super group. They uh, got together to, to, to record this. My dad played this when it came out in 1990. I was seven years old and he played it to death. So I thought that maybe for a buck this would have some sort of nostalg nos nostalgic uh, value to me. But none of that. It's just shite all the way through. Um, it's it's overproduced. Kind of good songs. Some of them, maybe two. and But overproduced as shit. Just like they did in the late 80s with this kind of rock, folk rock music. Not good at all. I won't keep the, this, a mint copy of Peter Gabriel's car, uh, or first solo record. Um, it's in. It's never been played before I played it. It looks untouched. But this is like a second German press, I think. And the sound quality is not good. My own copy, I think it's a, a first press UK, sounds much better. So, that, so I'm gonna keep my old copy. The same goes with this Scratch, the second one. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, the sound quality is not good at all, even if it's in mint condition. It's just like a wall of sound, no details or, I mean, at all. So, so, won't keep them. I got the two Peter Gabriel records for free. One that I will keep, <coughs> but probably not play, is Guns N' Roses' You Could Be Mine from Terminator 2 soundtrack, 1991. I bought this for a buck, or a dollar, or ten Swedish crowns. Krona. Um, for nostalgic reasons. Yeah, just... Nice one to have in the collection. <coughs> Cheers everyone. <coughs> okay, so here's two records that everyone, and I mean everyone, should buy. Everyone should buy these. First, 2012 I think it was, uh, David Sequoia Flame uh, got together with Jeff Greer to release his record with uh, Schematics for Blank Stare, his group, uh, Acid Rain. And they Everyone knows about this. Most of you know uh, know about this. They did a gatefold, and the backside is just freaking awesome. And Nathan Morales was uh, collaborating with them on the cover, I think, uh, and put out this. So this this is a VC product. 
And what it is, is Jeff Greer plays Fender Rhodes with two other guys on, I think, drums and guitar. And Moog and other stuff, and bass and, and other stuff. This is a psychedelic record uh, with a lot of fuzz guitar and a lot of Fender Rhodes. If you like that kind of music, this is just killer, 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 killer. And then a year later, not too long ago, uh, Jeff Greer released this with Schematics for Blank Stare, uh, Kiss of Death. With two more guys, so they are a five piece band, two guitarists and a bass. Uh, with the Fender Rhodes and drumming, and this is, I mean, this is ju just as good, both are really good. Uh, the sound quality is maybe a little bit better on this one, and uh, this is a little bit more jazzy, but it, it still has that psychedelic, great Fender Rhodes kind of music on it. Both of these you get for less than what socks costs or uh, you know milk. It's yeah, just they they decided to offer them to the world for next to nothing, um, and it's so worth it. Even with the shipping for both of them in the bundle that they have, it's still cheap. I mean, it's still less than the two records with shipping is still less than what one record costs if you want to buy it, so uh, in any other store. So for that reason, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. The music is great, it's a great deal. Um, and thank you so much all involved for bringing us the music. Great project, thank you so much guys. I got me a copy of uh, Neil Young's Live at the Cellar Door from I think 1971, but I'm not super sure. I couldn't find uh, the date here. <clears throat> the new archive series release <clears throat> on this one Neil plays by himself not crazy or so anything just by himself either on piano or on the acoustic guitar and the, listen to the tracks here tell me why only love can break your heart after a gold rush expecting to fly back for loneliness an old man and birds uh, don't let it bring you down see the sky about to rain cinnamon girl I'm a child down by the river and flying on the ground is wrong I mean it's just like killer lineup of songs it's just insane and you get a version of cinnamon girl here on <clears throat> just piano i mean and these sell out pretty quick so if you want a copy of this and not have to pay like 60 70 80 bucks in a month or two grab it now i got it from uh, canadian amazon for a great price i don't know if it's still there now sound quality wise it's Probably the best uh, record I've ever heard, uh, and it, it was a fantastic first record to play on the new turntable. You hear every detail, every strum on the guitar, every cough of the audience, every... It feels like Neil is sitting in your living room, <coughs> or your, I mean, playing area. And at one point I thought that there was something wrong with the record player for being new, you know, you listen to everything. Uh, but I realized it was Neil uh, thumping his foot to the uh, rhythm of the of the music when he was playing the piano, because <clears throat> you hear that thump 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 uh, to the, to the music, and it's just like that detail. Highly highly recommended, and my favorite I think my favorite release in the archive series up till now. Got a copy of John Tropea Tropia. Uh, Tropia's To Touch You Again from 1979. Uh, Jon Tropia is a guitarist, I think he's a session guitarist, and this is his second release, I think. This is a killer... Re it's really, really good. It's not a masterpiece by any means, but it's, it's really, really good. And he has a great guitar uh, style in the same vein as... as uh, I mean, Jan Schaffer, maybe in the mid 70s or something like that, with that kind of fat but accurate guitar tone and sound. And he's with some great people on here. Steve Gadd plays drums on most tracks. The sound quality is great. You have two drummers, one in each channel, and it's crisp as hell. Uh, the music is a little bit of funky fusion, typical jazz from that 1979 period. Uh, I mean, if you find this for a dollar or two or three, uh, get a copy of this. It's it's uh, it's worth it. I got it for this. I couldn't get rid of this uh, without tearing it, so it's it's gonna be there. But I got uh, this for one dollar. Uh, 
and that sticker I got off. So <clears throat> next one also a dollar find, and you never find these records, you know, in Sweden. So find them in a thrift store is just yeah, great. Tommy Boys and Bobby Hart. It's happening on the inside. Um, psych pop record, psych rock record. Uh, pretty an anonymous. Um, maybe late 60s, I don't know, on AM, AM, AM records, AM records. Looks like that, we all know that. Um, and it's pretty good, it's not like fantastic or anything, but for being a psych pop record, it's pretty good and a dollar, um, in great shape. Uh, they do a cover of Jumping Jack Flash and some other stuff, uh, some other covers that I recognize when I listen to it. Um, so, so yeah, recommended. And playing in the background, uh, Mano Jibango, Jibango, uh, Big Blow. And this is on Sonnet Records, released 1978. But first released in France on a label I think called Société Française de Son in 1976. So French and Sweden only, I think, because I couldn't find any any. UK or US press uh, of this. There's the backside, and I found this for a dollar. I thought it was pretty uh, interesting. Uh, looked like funky with some jazz, and that's just like what it is. It's funky jazz with a touch of a little bit of world music, maybe a little, little, little bit of world music. And this was marketed as a disco number one hit in, in England, but there's, I mean, there's not any disco on this. I mean, maybe li a little bit with some of the beats and the rhythm of the drums, but not, no, not a disco record. It's a funky jazz record. That's what it is. And in 1978 uh, the Sonnet label looked like this. <clears throat> Cheers again. <clears throat> so I have this entire evening for myself. I have most of the night tomorrow, tomorrow by myself so th there's gonna be a lot of record listening and it's gonna be great shit it's gonna be great I have a bunch of stuff that I've listened to and I have maybe six seven eight records that I just cleaned that I'm gonna listen to so don't be surprised if I'm back tomorrow to do a next uh, final finds of the stuff that I've listened to until then whenever we meet again have a great day everybody Bye.